I want to give a big thank you to all my patrons, and I'll be doing a Kingsguard roll call after today's video. Welcome back to the Fantasy Network, everyone. My name is, of course, Jimmy Nuts, and today we're going to be doing a no-spoiler review of a Guy Gavril K. standalone novel, and that is A Song for Our Bone. This clocks in just over 500 pages, and within those 500 pages, I think that uh, Guy Gavril K. beautifully weaves a story that touches on a lot of very human themes and topics that are very applicable to today's world. Uh, I don't know if there is any better demonstration of Guy Gabriel K's ability to craft not just a clever plot, remarkable characters, and amazing writing, but how he ties it all in to almost a hypnotizing experience for me and, and really gets me lost. And in every sense of the word, uh, K shows style, style in his writing, in his characters, in his themes. And I just don't know if there's anyone who has a stronger grip on all facets of the craft than Guy Gabriel K. This book is almost annoyingly neat, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I've said this about other GGK books is that uh, it's great. And sometimes I wish that he would blunder a little bit. Sometimes I actually wish that he was just a wee bit messier. But without a doubt, this standalone is something that I think is just awesome. So what is a song for Arbone about? And by the way, this will be no spoilers. Uh, this is a low fantasy book. Some people would even say that it's more of a historical fantasy. Um, either way, I think if you're a fantasy fan, you can enjoy this. You also don't need any historical context. I've seen some people say that. Um, I don't have any historical context for what inspired this, and I understood this book completely fine. And it's loosely based around 12th century province and then the Obsidian Crusades. There are various countries in this story, has a really cool world map, and uh, the world is a bit fleshed out, especially for like a 500-page novel. Very, very impressive. Guy Gravel K is always very impressive with how economical he is with his word count. But uh, the main two are Arbonne, which is in the title of this book, and then we have Gorhat, which is up in the north. And these two places have a ton of tension, least of which not coming from... Uh, their gods. So Gorhat is much more of a violent worshiping of a god of war, whereas Arbone is, I mean, it couldn't be any more polar opposite. It is troubadours, poets, and artists being held in the highest regard, a land of culture uh, and of love. And Rian, I believe, is the goddess mother of, of that religion, and this is what they follow. They have priestess, and there's definitely more of a feminine feel to the uh, entire structure of our bone, where Gorhat is masculinity turned up to the maximum, and this tension boils over and is really the main point, or, or I should say the main conflict of Song for Our Bone. Our Bone is a very weird place if you think about it compared to today's standards, and this is where we find our main character, Blaze, who is a mercenary, who I'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, kind of making his way a fish out of water if you if you want to use that phrase and Arbone is holding like I said troubadours above even dukes and it is not not frowned upon it's actually encouraged for these troubadours and these artists to seduce dukes wives and that is like part of the culture that is that is smiled upon and encouraged and it, it, it is very very odd I think this quote that I have here uh, properly kind of represents the atmosphere of our bone, and I want to read it to you. There was a new fashion among the younger troubadours and nobles. She even thought Ariane might approve of it. They were writing and saying how it was ill-bred and bad taste, if not actually impossible, for a wife to love her husband. That true love had to flow freely from the choice made willingly, and marriage could never be a matter of such free choice for men or women in the society they knew. Uh, one beautiful writing here by Guy Garvey, okay, as always, some really good compound sentences in there and, and some good word choice, but... I, I'm painting this because this is odd, and this is something that you might hear this and say, this book sounds like it is not for me. This sounds like a romance, but I promise you it's a lot deeper than that, uh, though it, there is a kind of revolving theme around intimacy in these in this book. Uh, GGK is always doing weird sex stuff. Well, you're not wrong. Guy Gavrikay is known to write some sexually explicit scenes with a whole bunch of details, but strangely enough, for a story revolving around relationships and consent and love, there's actually a, an absence of very, very explicit sex scenes. So I feel like he kind of left it unsaid in this. And there's really none of that here in A Song for Our Bone. I find that oddly disappointing. Well, yeah, you might find it disappointing, but I do know there are some people who are turned away from Guy Gavriel K because of these scenes. And this is actually probably the one I would recommend to you if you're trying to avoid a lot of that Guy Gavriel K uh, <laughs> pizzazz, I guess we'll call it. So Gorhat in the north is a much more dangerous place. And this is actually where our main character Blaze is from, the mercenary. Um, and it's not just more dangerous, but it's also a lot more vile. I feel like women are treated beyond 
poorly. Like it's not just the discrepancy of like where they can like reach in society. They are treated um, like like you know lowly animals. It is it is very rough stuff. And I think one of the main themes that we're going to get from Gore Holt and Song of Our Bone when you look at this as an incomplete story is consent. And consent is is nowhere to be found in Gore Holt, whereas consent is an abundance uh, in Our Bone. And you could actually argue that in Our Bone maybe the consent is kind of implied because of the culture and what is hip at the time. But Gore Holt, I mean, it's just not there. And it is probably a poke at masculinity in some ways. Uh, and it's not as straightforward as I'm making it sound in this review. So if you feel like this is coming off as something that would be preachy or really heavy handed, it's actually not. Um, it's just whenever you take a look back and you kind of look at the, um, the dynamics of these two places, they are polar opposites, but maybe also a little closer than we would realize, which is, is something that Guy Garvey OK weaves into the story as well, with love and hate being a lot closer than, than we believe. Leave. And this is beautifully written in the sense that uh, our bone is written in a third person past tense. We get a ton of POVs. I've been talking about Blaze, who is the main character, but there are a lot of POVs. Actually, I was surprised by some of the people we got POVs from, which was a great surprise. And Guy Gravel K does that seamlessly. It's really great. Uh, but Gorhat, which is up in the north, which is a much more, you know, animalistic society, is written in the present tense third person, which I'm not, I've never been a big fan of present tense uh, first person. I, I don't know why, it just always kind of rubs me the wrong way, but I loved it in this book. And I have to wonder if there, this is to reflect the nature of these two places, where Arbonne is a much more reflective society. Uh, you know, there, there's thought put into each and every action and, you know, very artistic and um, considering is probably the word I would use. And so it's written in a past tense, which comes off kind of reflective, if you think about it. Whereas the present tense is so like terse and in the moment and sporadic. And that kind of feels like Gorhat. So the writing tense that Guy Gavriel K chooses to display these two areas that are very different actually enhances the feeling of these POVs and these chapters. And this is one of the examples of Guy Gavriel K considering everything in the story, the style of the writing, the plot and the characters and the perspective, everything. And this is why he's awesome. So if you're thinking that our bone sounds a little too crazy for you <laughs> and that there's, you know, uh, people interacting with each other and in intimacy outside of marriage and it makes you feel a little uncomfortable, you're, you're actually going to get a POV that I think softens the blow of this and does kind of put you in that fish out of water state. And that is Blaze. And Blaze is the mercenary, the main character, which I mentioned earlier in this review, but he is also from... Gorhat. He's from the North. So he has grown up and been raised in, in pretty high esteem, by the way. Like his family is very high up in Gorhat. Uh, to think that all these people are loonies and he, he's, he almost can't believe it. Like it's almost laughable to him that he's here as a mercenary. He doesn't have a ton of respect at the opening of the story for these people and is like, whatever, pin me, pay me, I'm good. I think this is a really good POV to introduce to you. Uh, the culture of our bone because poetry and music are just so important, whereas Blaze doesn't care at all about any of this. He thinks these people are, are just absolute lunatics. One thing I will say about Blaze, I think he is just an awesome character. Um, man, his relationship with his father in this book is excellent. Also with his brother. There, it's, it gets a little messy for Blaze uh, in this story, but I think that Guy Gravel K navigates a lot of those really tricky relationships so well and with such good care. And Blaze is a growing character. He's a breathing character and a tangible character that changes throughout the story. One thing I will say, though, in addition to this, is that he is a mercenary. And I think when we think about mercenary fantasy, we think of like down rugged people. Like I kind of think of like Rudd Three Trees or or Logan Nine Fingers when I think of mercenary for some reason. But this is uh, a, a much higher brow mercenary. I don't think that you're going to get like the down and gruff like grunts from from Blaze. He's actually extremely thoughtful. Uh, and I'll kind of come and touch back on this about the characters at the end with one of my criticisms about this book. Uh, but just know that when you hear mercenary, it's not like a sellsword doing like really down and dirty things. He He's actually pretty noble. There are many characters in this story, like I said, but one that I really enjoyed the intro of is Signe, which is the queen of our bone, the countess, I believe. And through her, I felt like I actually got a really true sense of history from our bone. And her introduction is very reflective, which again, I kind of talked about about with comparing the places and the way that Guy Garvey OK uses present and past tense to represent the cultures. Uh, she's reflective of things that she has lost, though, in the past and things that her and her husband, um, you know, maybe have mistakes that they have made and where they messed up. And I think that her thoughts about her family and how one event 
really ruined it for them is is really powerful stuff and i think it sets the tone for our bone as well that this isn't just love and there's almost like an art uh, like it's artificial to feel all these songs that are encouraging and talking about love and and loss uh, but her you see the really human inner thoughts of that and not just the performance of a song which there are tons of songs in this book that are actually really good by the way but i just loved her um she even thinks about how the songs have been changing over the last few decades. So you see like the culture shifting and the art is shifting with time, which is very realistic. And uh, just like all the progress that the land has made, but she still feels the, the destruction that a past event had caused her family. And it just feels real. And I'm hinting at this for you, but this book is not all wishy-washy, sentimental, garbage, very optimistic. It has interpersonal conflicts. It has outer ranging conflicts that go not just between countries, but also within these countries themselves. Our bone is a land of love. And it's funny because really what's happening in our bone is all stemming from a misinterpretation of what love is and who loves who. And it's hate between two nobles that is the main conflict within our bone. Forget Gorhalt in the north, but there is a massive conflict and awkwardness that has been plaguing this place for decades. And it's actually not stemming off love, but of hate. And this is Guy Gavalcay's way of nudging us to think about the fact that love and hate are very close to one another. The line between those two things is very thin. I think about uh, my favorite MMA fighter, maybe ever, is Nick Diaz, the older of the Diaz brothers. And whenever he was going on a tear as one of the best welterweights in the world and challenging for titles and a, a marquee fighter in a main event, uh, he did an interview where he said that he absolutely hated fighting. And at this point in the game, people had not really said that. People weren't saying, you know, I hate doing this. And someone said, if you hate it so much, why do you do it? And he said, it's because I, I love it. And they're like, well, what do you mean hate and love? And he's like, you have to hate this game to love it. And that has always spoke to me. Um, I've always had a sense of like hatred or resentment towards things that I love doing because there's parts of it that just suck. And you're so obsessed with this thing that love can turn into hate. Like you wish that you could get it out of your brain, but you need it and you have to do it. Um, and that's what Nick Diaz was getting in the interview. It's one of my favorite interviews of all time. It's so transparent. And I think Guy Garvey okay is showing that off here. And for me to relate those two things, you know, just enhance this book so much more. So it's not just all love here. There, there, there's a lot of uh, past trauma that people haven't let go. And people are tied together, not just because they have love and intimacy, but because they have intense hatred for one another. And it's actually more about the emotional ties to people, whether good or bad, that gets explored in A Song for Our Bone. And pain from these emotions are, are wonderfully explored in A Song for Our Bone by Guy Gravel K. And he writes some of the most captivating action scenes. There's a duel in this book that I think is maybe one of the best that I have read. And a lot of this comes because these scenes are very emotionally charged. Like you feel the backstory of these people, you feel their hurt. And he spares no details in battle, which I also liked because with a book that has a ton of song and culture and artistic value to it, uh, the contrast of that with down, dirty, in detail, grimy fighting uh, really makes it shine and, and provides more of a rounder experience for someone that dives into this novel. This is a quote that I think also kind of shows that Guy Gravel okay is going to be reaching into stuff that goes past just the wishy-washy optimistic feelings. And he says, one poet I know has gone so far as to say that everything men do today, everything that happens, whether of glory or beauty or pain, is merely to provide the matter of songs for those who come after us. Our lives are lived to become their music tying in some of these tragedies and big events to music and the fact that this does carry on. And if you think about it in the real world, you know, once we're gone and our bodies decay, we're, we're out, right? Uh, the only way we can be carried on is maybe through spoken word, written word, music, and that that is very uh, consistent with human nature. And this is one of the best things about the balance that Guy Gavro K provides in this book. My only complaints about this book and, and their nitpicks maybe, but like I said, Guy Gavro K is just a little too perfect. Uh, it, this plot wraps up super neat. Like there's not a single thread that is left un. So, I mean, it, it is there for you if you like very intricately planned plots that leave nothing to the imagination. This is here. Everything gets wrapped up. But that doesn't mean everything's happy. There's a lot of bittersweet moments here. There's a lot of sadness as well. And I felt uh, emotion while reading this book, not to the point of tears or anything, but I did feel it, which is awesome because I, I read to feel a lot of the times. Um, but I wouldn't have minded just a little bit more of a mess. Like sometimes I wish Guy Gabriel K would blunder just a little bit and it not feel so manufactured if that makes sense. And that brings me 
to my other criticism is, and I mentioned this with Blaze, you know, he's a mercenary, but he is very noble. I'm not saying that that isn't possible, but I wish that there was a little bit more variance in the main POVs of this story. Everyone is really smart. Everyone is really clever and everyone is so adept at everything going on around them at all times that even when they get something wrong, um, they can immediately see like, oh, I should have known that. And it's just like, I wish maybe there was a moron or two that was a main POV. Like, I almost wish Blaze wasn't as awesome as he is. I wish that maybe um, Bertrand maybe wasn't as clever as he is. The characters are remarkable, rememberable, and I was invested in every single POV we got. I just would have liked if maybe someone was just a good old-fashioned commoner that was just a little, you know, out of the know. And... That's it. Like, there are times where Guy Gravel K feels so neat, he feels so perfect, that it does feel slightly manufactured to me, if if that's the right word to use. These are nitpicks, uh, just slight things that bothered me. This is actually the first five-star fantasy book I've read in 2023. So I loved it. Don't get, don't get it twisted. And Guy Gavriel K's book of Song for Our Bone, in my opinion, is, is just a masterclass in low fantasy. The magic is more superstition and the fantastical comes from the moments of personal conflict and people's own nature being their enemy and having to overcome biases and conflicts that are some of the most fundamental human experiences that we can have existing in, in, in this world or within our bone. And this is what GGK does better than almost any other author. And I think it's on full display in A Song for Art Bone. An absolute well-rounded experience with every single thing you need for an amazing story. It is a little bit of a slower pace for those who are, you know, more tuned to the modern pacing of, of things going in and happening. Um, there's a lot of setup and there's a lot of personal moments in here for, for characters. And I think he chooses the best moments in the story to dip a little bit before we come up into some of the best battles I've read this year. So a Song for Art Bone, absolutely excellent. I loved it. I hope you do if you pick it up. If you've already read it, uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of it. Have you read any other Guy Gavriel? Okay, I've read Under Heaven and Lines of Alversan, and I think I actually prefer this just a wee bit more over those. But he's excellent, becoming one of my favorite authors, and I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more Guy Gavriel K stuff, I would definitely uh, recommend checking out my Lines of Alversan video here on the channel. But also, Jake Bishop is another booktuber that does a ton of Guy Gavriel K. And I believe it's the Library Ladder as well. He does a lot of good uh, Guy Gavriel K videos. And I'm excited to continue diving through all of his works. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, you can hit like. If you dislike it, you can hit dislike. And if you love it, think about subscribing because I'll be doing more GGK content in the future. There's a Patreon in the description. It's optional, but always appreciated. Until I see you next time, be good, be safe, and remember to always keep turning the page. I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons, which include my Wildlings Knights watching Kingsguard. My Kingsguard includes... Warren, Henrik, Kai, Eric B, Oscar, Stewart, Stephen R, Kaika, Amanda, RJ, Shad, Nicoletta, Tanner, Jennifer, Garrick, Frank C, Evie, Fever, J, Sarah, Pat, Prithvi, Kevin, Ryan, Michael, Terrence, Wade, Darren, Taylor D, Derry, John C, Bass, Mitch, Sebastian, Benjamin, Jobot, Noel, Amanda L, Kyle C. Scott, Steve Talks, Books, Caitlin S, Dylan M, Yolanda, Carlos, Nicholas, Chadia, Beesneys, Matthias, and John. Thank you all so much. You're the best.